Welcome back to 8701. In this section, we want to look at how we can theoretically describe masses of neutrinos. There is not just one way to do this, and the judge is still out there, which one is actually realized in nature, or perhaps both are realized in nature. So mass terms can be constructed by introducing so-called sterile neutrinos. The first way, in, shown here in the Lagrangian, is very familiar to you, where you have a left-handed component of a particle coupling via the Higgs boson to a right-handed component. Now, if we now have a right-handed component or right-handed neutrino, that neutrino does not interact with the weak interaction and it doesn't interact with any other interaction we know. Hence, this neutrino, this right-handed particle is a sterile neutrino, it's not interacting in any of known ways um, other than with the Higgs field with, 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 uh, with the rest of the standard model. The second part, the second way, the mechanism is um, using uh, Majorana particles, particles which are their own antiparticles. And we'll look in how this is being implemented. So again, the first the direct term is generated after electroweak symmetry breaking from new cover interactions. We have seen the very same thing for our charged lepton. What we see here is that the lepton number <coughs> is conserved. You know, before and after the interaction, we have the same number of leptons, but the lepton flavor is not conserved in this interaction. So we can rewrite this. Um, we identify the sterile neutrino as a right-handed component of the spino. I mentioned this already. Um, and you know, we basically couple the, the weak duplet components as we would just expect um, that, that to appear. The second term, the Majorana mass term, is interesting as we introduce another singlet into the standard model. So this then can appear as a bare mass term with some consequences. So here what we are trying to do is we are involved two neutrinos, right-handed fields, um, those break the lepton number. So if those neutrinos are realized in nature, we have to observe lepton, we should observe lepton number violating processes. And so the search for the specific kind of neutrino is through searching for lepton, lepton number violating processes. So we can rewrite this part of the Lagrangian, this part of the mass term here using this matrix. So let's see how this unfolds. If the mass term now is um, much, much larger or ma larger than the uh, electroweak scale, um, you can try to di diagonalize the mass term and it leads to three neutrinos, three light neutrinos, three light neutrinos you would expect, and one potentially, one potential or maybe multiple potential heavy neutrinos. If you then rewrite the mass term, you find for the light ones, the term which goes is one over the scale of this neutrino. That is a nice motivation for this kind of physics as it automatically reduces the mass of the neutrino as we observe their masses to be very small in nature. And then the mass of the heavy neutrino is proportional to the mass. This mechanism is called seesaw because you automatically move the scales of those two, of those two neutrinos um, the heavy ones and the light one apart. So, you know, you haven't observed the heavy one, maybe because they're very, very heavy, and the light ones have light mass because of this mechanism of being proportional to one over the mass scale, uh, the mass eigenstate of those neutrinos. However, if the mass scale of those eigenvalues is much not higher than the electroweak scale, the lower energy spectrum contains this additional light states. So you have not just the three light neutrinos, but you have additional light scales, states which mix with these three light neutrinos. And that is kind of an interesting um, area of, of to look for these particles as they would lead to small deviations in observed electroweak position properties. Um, and they might yield to some interesting uh, decays in nuclear physics, and we'll come to those specifics later. So we have seen in this lecture 
two different ways to generate masses. One's to the Kaba interactions, same as you know, so the, the interaction with the Higgs field, and one via the seesaw mechanism introducing Majorana neutral. 